I've been reading through the book of Exodus, and one of the powerful themes I believe God is showing me is the power of His presence. Just a few moments in the presence of God can change a life. It can change an entire group of people. For example, the life of Moses and the people of God was changed by one encounter with the presence of God in a burning bush. The life of Moses and the people of God was changed by one encounter with God on top of Mount Sinai where he gave them the Ten Commandments. The people of God were guided and comforted by the presence of God through a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Exodus 13 verse 21 says, By day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. So when we come to Exodus 33, you can see why the presence of God was such a big deal. The presence of God was where God revealed his will to the people. The presence of God was how God guided the people. The presence of God was what brought comfort to the people that God was with them. The presence of God was both the comforter and the counselor. Does that remind you of anything we see in the New Testament? The Holy Spirit is described as both the comforter and the counselor for the people of God. And that brings us to our passage for today. Exodus 33, a passage that is all about the presence of God. I pray that God would use this passage in your life to teach you both to seek the presence of God found through the Holy Spirit daily as you meet with Him, as well as teaching you to seek the presence of God when we come together as the body of Christ in our worship services. Exodus 33 verse 7 says this, Now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. See, the entire goal of this tent of meeting was for people to encounter the presence of God. I want us as Point Church to be known as a people who inquire of the Lord, a people who seek the presence and guidance of the Lord. Verse 8, And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrance to their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while Moses spoke with the Lord. Now when Moses went into the tent of meeting, it was obvious that the presence of God was there because a pillar of cloud came down over the tent. However, we know that cloud was a sign. The cloud itself was not the presence of God. The cloud did serve a purpose because it indicated to the people that the presence of God was there. In verse 10, whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and worshiped each at the entrance to their tent. You see, the people were trained that when the presence of God was present, their response was to worship. Verse 11, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face, as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Can you imagine what it must have been like for Moses to speak to God face to face as a man speaks to a friend? You know, I've never experienced God like that, at least not yet, but I will. When Jesus returns, we will see God face to face. And that's why I'm drawn to crowd and prayer, amen, come Lord Jesus. Now, to give just a little bit of context, Exodus 33 takes place just after the people of God have made and worshipped the golden calf. Moses had been on the mountain of God for 40 days, and they assumed that he was dead. And so they took matters into their own hands. And as you can imagine, God was pretty upset with them for making this idol. So he was going to send an angel with them ahead to the promised land, but he was not going to go with them himself. His presence was not going to go with them. It's important to know that as we read our final part of this passage together. It says, verse 12, Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, leave these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your way, so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you're pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. 
Moses asked God for one thing, his presence. Why? Because it was the presence of God that distinguished the people of God from the dead religions and false idols of all the other peoples of the world. The presence of God was what had already guided the, the people and empowered them. It, it, it was what guided them to break free, cross the desert, conquer nations, and receive the promised land. Now, how does this apply to us today? See, we are in the New Covenant. We live in the New Testament age. We are the church, the body of Christ. We have the Holy Spirit of God living in us. However, a false assumption that we often make is that just because we have the Holy Spirit living in us, it does not mean that we are encountering the presence of God. It does not mean that the presence of God is automatic in our lives. You see, it's possible to live in someone's house and never see them, to never come into their presence. See, this is why we are commanded to be filled with the Spirit, while we're commanded to walk by the Spirit, while we're commanded to keep in step with the Spirit. It's not enough to simply have the Spirit of God within us. That just means the presence of God is available. We must intentionally seek Him. And I think the same thing applies to us as a body of believers. See, I believe one of the biggest problems with many American churches is that we are trying to do religion without the presence of God. It's like we're trying to run the car without gas and sitting back talking about the good old days when we used to drive it. <laughs> we have to start getting into the presence of God every day and coming expectant when we gather. We need to be praying to encounter the living God in our worship services. What if you viewed our worship services as a tenth of meeting? I think that we need to once again view our Sunday worship gatherings as a place to encounter God together as a body of believers. Come to church this week looking for and expecting to encounter the living God. Why? Because I believe you will find what you are looking for.